Now, the Russian representative at the Global Chemical Arms Watchdog says it's highly likely that the alleged chemical attack in Syria was staged by British intelligence services. Yes, uh, we have grounds to believe that it is highly likely that the provocation was organized by the British intelligence services. Actually, there is no other plausible explanation than the interference of the British special services. No other plausible alternative. Alexander Shulgin said that Western countries led by the United States don't want any investigation because they already made their decision by launching attacks on Syria. He said the U.S., Britain and France are afraid that the investigation team proves false their allegation. This comes as experts from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons are set to travel to the Syrian city of Douma on Wednesday to investigate the allegation. The U.S. and its allies claim that, the Syrian, that Syria used chemical agents in Douma two weeks ago that killed dozens of people. Damascus and Moscow, however, deny any such attack. Let's speak to Jay Therapel. He's with the Hands Off Syria campaign, and he joins us via Skype from Sydney. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. Therapel. Now, uh, first of all, uh, this allegation or criticism that's been made against the U.S., France, and Britain of not waiting for an investigation or its results and uh, uh, launching the attacks against Syria, uh, does that mean that they've already made up their mind on who the culprit is? I think so, um, and I think uh, the reason why we can we we could have started to be suspicious that there was some um, there was something being hidden is that on the 11th of April, um, the Daily Mail actually reported that uh, the Ministry of Defence, um, the British Ministry of Defence, denies Iranian reports that British special forces have been captured after infiltrating into Syria. Um, this report came from Al Mayadeen and it claims that the captured British soldiers were then shuttled away to Idlib. Obviously, this gives the Syrian government leverage in negotiating an end to the war, and so there is a there is a possibility that we're not we're not hearing everything. It could be the case that all of these chemical weapons allegations and the strikes that came afterwards is all just a massive distraction to distract attention away from the fact. Or uh, away from the possibility, I should say, that the the chemical weapons attack was staged to begin with. So that makes the OPCW investigation all the more imperative, now, doesn't it? It does. It does, and that's why, in particular, I fear for the lives of those OPCW investigators because the Syrian government has an interest in in finding out the truth and. Uh, we have good reasons for suspecting that British special forces were in Douma because back in 2011, um, we, we know from WikiLeaks that British special forces were training mercenaries inside Syria. So the fact is that the British have been in Syria for a very, very long time. We can even go back to, to the events of last year. I mean, there's a pattern, which is that whenever the Syrian government discovers something suspicious and embarrassing for the countries that are trying to topple the Syrian government, those countries then accuse Syria of using chemical weapons. And this then successfully distracts attention away from the allegations that the Syrian government are making against its enemies. So, for example, last year in April, uh, Syria's Deputy Foreign Minister Faisal Mikdad actually stated on Mayadeen TV, again Mayadeen TV, that um, he had provided the OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, with information on the trafficking of toxic chemical substances into Syria from across the border in Turkey. And then, all of a sudden last year in April, we heard the allegations that the Syrian government had used, used chemical weapons against Khan Sheikhoun, which is closer to the, to the Turkish border. And we were told to just automatically accept that the Syrian government was responsible for it. So again, this is the second time, and, and this is really, really important, second time that it's happened in April, that's the first thing. And the second time that the Syrian government has made accusations about the trafficking of chemical weapons, um, gone to the OPCW to report their uh, um, to report their findings, and then all of a sudden there's accusations being made against them. This time it's British SAS soldiers, and this is something that we have to uh, uh, that most likely the Syrian government has up its sleeve. It's something that you, they can use as leverage against Britain, um, but we'll really have to wait for the OPCW's report to come out with the with the full facts of what happened. 
Right now, very quickly, if you can, Mr. Thorapel, this obviously raises questions about uh, the aims and objectives of the UK and its allies, the US and France, when it comes to these missile strikes. Theresa May was very adamant that these strikes were mainly aimed to send a message against the use of chemical weapons, but that's not the case. No, I mean, it makes uh, absolutely no sense. I mean, the former, I mean, even what's embarrassing for Britain is that they have ex-SAS uh, commanders. So one of them, his name is Jonathan Shaw, and he came out quite publicly and said that he doesn't believe a word of what Theresa May was saying. He said that the allegations are completely flawed. Uh, it doesn't make sense for the Syrian government to carry out these attacks, especially when they had already won the war. I mean, it's not even a case of the Syrian government um, uh, not benefiting it from uh, benefiting tactically in a war situation. This is a situation in which Jaysh al-Islam had already been put onto buses and they were being evacuated to Idlib. So in that situation, why would they have to use it? So it's a very embarrassing situation for the British and the Americans who are raising these allegations, especially given that people within their administrations or, or former officials, more, more likely the former officials, are expressing doubt and completely undermining the claims that these officials, that the, that the uh, British and American governments are making. All right, let's leave it there for now. That's Jay Therapel with the Hands Off Syria campaign joining us via Skype from Sydney. Mr. Therapel, thank you very much indeed for your comments here on Press TV.